Welcome to another MTD Technical Corner. Now today we're talking with Dave from Hexagon about NC Simul, which is all about verifying NC code. Now Dave, if someone's writing NC code or it comes out of a CAM system, why, should, why wouldn't you just want to run that CAM, that, that program on the machine and do a standard prove out? Why do you need a piece of software to run it through first? Yeah, NC Simul takes your, the, the machine code, if you like, NC file we usually call it, um, and it, it verifies that NC file. So. Part of the problem with getting uh, any NC file from whichever source it comes from, whichever CAM system or your handwritten, you're standing on the control and you're proving that out quite often single block, single block, as you work your way through the program. Um, once you've run this uh, file through NC Simul, that's all done. So once you, you get down on the machine, you just press go and everything's trusted, you know it's going to work. So there's, it reduces that cutout, uh, the prove out time, sorry. Okay, and I guess those prove out times, if it's a, a, a big complex part, they take quite a long time versus the cycle time of a standard part. Yeah. Is there a cost associated with that prove out time normally then? Yeah, massive, massive cost. Yeah, we've done studies on uh, sort of how long it takes or how long a machine stood proving a part out, you know, and the average is around about 8% of the time. It depends, you know, it varies industry, industry, and what have you, but 8% uh, of the time, and if you start working this out, now we'll start doing the maths. You know, eight percent. If you charge an ad machine out at seventy-five pound an hour, you're running two shifts. You know, it gets a lot of money, and you talk. You can be look. You're looking up to about twenty-five grand per machine per year. You're losing just in uh, prove-out time, basically. So if we can even half that using NC Simul, you know, you're looking at massive cost savings. So you're extracting all the problem, the the, the long prove-out prove, prove time from physically on the machine to back into the back office, which is, I guess you try and take everything that's not full productivity machining out of that um, bottleneck process. Yeah. But I guess when you're trying to um, simulate these machines, you need to really capture every part of the behavior of that machine. How does NC Simul manage to capture all the complexities of, mach of a machine tool? Yeah, well, you can see we incorporate the machine model. You know, obviously we've got the, the table and uh, the spindle and everything on that side of it. But the, just as important, we also, uh, incorporate data from the control as well so we'll when we come on site to prove these uh, digital twins as we call them when we prove these out uh, we'll come on site and we'll download all the um, software off the machine as well you know so any macros that you use and subroutines variables are all taken care of inside the, the digital twin for within NC Sim as well so you are getting the true simulation from uh, that particular machine and all bespoke all of these digital twins are bespoke to that particular machine and i guess it's really important to find those little weird quirky bits of behavior from the machine mm. because those yeah. are those times when you're it's not the time when you're just facing off a part that something bad's going to happen it's when you're doing something weird yeah. or there's a strange home position move or some five five axis movement that you need to make sure that it's not going to smash your machine tool up yeah it's quite often the the bit that's out of cut if you like the link moves the moving back to a safe position or you know what it's like um, when you start if you make any edits on the nc code itself when you stood on the control sometimes you just have to miss a decimal point and it's a, a disaster you know waiting to happen exactly and looking you know, at a five axis job like this it could be quite easy if you imagine the spindle went straight into the tronion just yeah, because exactly. of some quick rapid move that you cannot control mm. i guess it, it's cheaper for it to happen inside this screen than it is in in real life you can't break anything on here can you you know so you wrap it a, a spindle into a table you're not looking at three or four thousand pound you're looking at thirty forty thousand pound to fix it you know plus the downtime on the machine you just can't afford it in this in this day and age you know so anything you can do with it ahead of the game ahead of uh, putting the nc file on the shop floor it's got to be a benefit you know so it's not just the opportunity cost from lost productivity, it's also the, the cost and the risk of smashing the machine as well. Absolutely. But moving on to kind of general workflow and, and, and user productivity in the software itself. Let's say we've, we've done a video already on edge cam. So if you check out that in the, in the Hexagon, Hexagon series of videos, we're doing something on edge cam. Um, and what happens when you set up the whole setup in, for example, edge cam, you've got the machine tool, you've got the fixturing, the part, the stock. Do you have to redo the whole process in NC Simul as well? You don't have to, no. Um, there's different ways and some companies work in different ways. You know, you can you can load um, the solid models directly onto the machine bed. It's, when you're using NC Simul, you've got to imagine you're stood in front of your machine. It's like the virtual machine tool, you know. So this is where I put my fixture, this is where my datum goes, this is where my stock goes, all this. So you can do all of that independently. 
um, pretty quick and easy with the the setup uh, tools that we have but if you've like you say if you're programmed in a cam system um we can we've got interfaces with most of the the big cam systems and you can just directly import everything uh, whether it's you know the the stock the fixture the part all your tools all your datums and everything come directly through from the cam um, so that again, like you say, it's and that speeds, speeds up the workflow. Yeah, yeah. What about you're once straight you... in the simulation, basically? You know, the simulation, and then you you verify in the the so, tool path movements. So once you're straight into simulation, is the simulation run real time, or can you speed it up faster than real time? Oh, much faster! Yeah, you can do it very quickly. You don't even have to watch the simulation. Really, you can just run it in the background, and then if there is any errors, you know, whether it's over travel syntax error or a collision uh, you'll get a list down here and then you just click on the the particular error message the graphics will jump to that uh, area where the error occurred but also the nc file will jump to that exact line of where the error occurred as well uh, so it makes it very quick and easy to to locate any problems and also if you click on any face of the machine part same thing happens the tool moves to that position the nc file moves to that position you can see some uh, gouges there so yeah, it's very quick and easy to um, locate any problem areas. You don't have to sit there for like, you know, two hours watching a, a massive program go through, you know, it's just go back to when it's finished. That sounds really quick to set up and, and obviously simulate, but mm. the resulting part that you see that's been cut, um, does that help with part quality as well? Can you check mm. that the part that you've cut is exactly the same as the part that you're expecting yeah. to cut? Yeah, absolutely. There's a comparison tool where you compare the solid model directly to the result and stock. And it'll, you know, you'll see any errors if you missed an area, you know, it's highlighted or in this case we've gouged here because the tool's not long enough. And um, so you'll see all of that. But you can also measure the part as well. So there's tools in there to, to measure the thickness of the walls, depth of the pocket, all this sort of thing. And you can in open an inspection report as well with all the measurements on. So, uh, you know, you go onto the machine, you know that as long as everything's set on the machine correctly, um, the part's going to come off correct, yeah. So you've got a good part off and you know you're not going to smash the machine. What about actually trying to improve the productivity in those cycles? Yeah, what we're going to do is analyze the toolpath. Once uh, you're happy with it and there's no collisions and everything, we can uh, go into a lot of depth in analyzing the toolpath. We can you know, work out the depth of cut, the, the chip floor, the chip thickness, volume of material being removed for every single uh, part of every line of the program and we can use that data to then optimize a toolpath so whether it's removing fresh air cuts or indeed when you're in cut you can slow the toolpath down for you know going to a corner perhaps or speed it up if you, you know if the depth of cut varies you want to go quicker as the, as the cut gets less you know so yeah we'll know all that inside there and say similar as well it seems like a, a definitely a, a tool that every engineer needs in their tool, but tool toolkit for doing even slightly complex parts. Yeah, if someone's looked at this video and they're interested in finding out more about NCSIML, about how it works, whether it can interface with a CAM system, whether they can get a demo, who do they have to get in touch with? Yeah, the website again is probably the uh, uh, the easiest way. Just go ncsimul.com and uh, you'll find the contact details on there. And I'm sure we'll uh, be able to accommodate you with the demo. Uh, soon as possible. And we'll put the contact details on the screen. Thank you very much, Dave. No problem.